at Daniel. Hi, Daniel. How are you? Hi. Good. Uh, how are you? Fine. Thank you. I'm glad you, you are here <laughs> just in time for your presentation. Yes, we me are too. really on, on, on the schedule. So it's uh, at, uh, at minute 30. So I will, uh, I, will, I will invite you to start your talk right now if you are ready. Okay. And please. And I, I should mention that um, I'm okay being interrupted with questions um, anytime uh, during the presentation. Um, so look forward, forward to hearing people's feedback. Um, can you see my screen? Oh, sorry. Can, can you see my screen? Yes, we can. We can. Oh, okay. Awesome. It, it's perfect. Okay. So uh, I'm talking about um, JSON to code. Um, it's a new form of compression. Uh, and it answers this question, what if our compressed data was just code? So what is it? Uh, JSON to code compression basically converts JSON serializable data into simple executable code. Let's break that down a little. Uh, JSON serializable, um, that just means simple data, whether it's sort of like a CSV or um, just text, uh, that sort of data. It doesn't work on compressing classes or sets. Not yet, anyway. Um, so we're going to start with a sort of simple example. Um, you all don't have to uh, read through all of that. But basically, uh, um, let me, uh, I, I went, and I'm going to try to go through quickly um, and not demo, like physically demo everything, because I want to leave some time for questions. Uh, but um, in the interest of reproducibility, uh, I went to the Phosphor G schedule and uh, I ran this code in the console uh, to basically take the schedule and convert it into uh, JSON. And uh, the schedule on the left, or the file on the left, that's the schedule in a JSON format. You can see it has time, duration, um, and then speakers, uh, abstract, track, and room. You can start to see that the, the track and room, even in that first example, um, starts to repeat. Uh, and that's going to be important to compression. Um, you'll also see that, of course, uh, time is repeated about every nine lines in, in duration and all those uh, keys to the objects. Uh, so what JSON a code compression does, and it's really not rocket science or satellite science. It's rather simple. It, it just converts those words into variables. It looks at what's the words that are being used the most. Um, and then it just assigns those to variable names. So you can see that abstract is probably used the most, or it's one, one of that's tied for being used the most. And that's assigned to that first letter, capital A. Um, I'm not sure if you can see my cursor, but now we're looking at the, the right side. Um, and then uh, capital B is assigned a duration because duration repeats for every object. Um, you'll see later that we're compressing not just the values of objects, but also their keys as well. Uh, and that's possible because of a lot of cool innovations uh, in JavaScript. Um, so this is just a screenshot. So I'm going to go to VS Code and, and show a little better um, what I mean uh, there. So this is that same data. And if we scroll to the, um, the bottom, everything's in that first line assigning uh, words to variable names. And then so the next um, line there, should be line three, 
then assigns um, creates the data, the the JSON object, um, or technically JavaScript object that's basically JSON serializable. Um, by replacing, and this is just basic JavaScript, uh, replacing these variable names with their values. Uh, so this is going to set um, the, uh, create an object and it's going to use H as the key. And based on the context here, it, H will stand for time and, and B will stand for duration. And so you can see it's, it's pretty simple. Um, okay, so let, Let's uh, continue the presentation. Uh, are there any questions so far? Okay, uh, hearing none, uh, I'll continue. And feel free to ask questions as we go on. Um, I do not have the, um, the venue less open. Um, so, so yeah, just... Um, yeah. Okay. I will so, let you know. I will let you know, Daniel, if questions. Uh, so the so now we're going to do a more advanced example, and I referenced this in the presentation on GeoRaster layer for Leaflet, um, and this is compressing uh, projection definitions. So uh, we're going to jump to our web browser here. Where I've run already run the JSON decode compression, so I, I'm in the interest of time not going to like type on my command line too much. Um, so this is uh, the projection information. Um, this information was scraped from a, a really great resource, uh, EPSGIO. Uh, they uh, provide a Docker container. Um, that has the data that you see on this website. Uh, and so we're not, uh, you know, increasing the web traffic on their site, but um, we run the Docker container and scrape all of the, the coordinate ref reference system definitions. Um, and so in this case, if you go to 3857, you'll see that uh, they provide a Proj4JS definition. Um, and so we're going to scrape that information, uh, put it into a CSV. And then after putting it into a CSV, I've totally lost my spot here. Um, we're going to convert it to a JSON. Uh, and so you see here the EPSG code, uh, and then the Proj4JS definition string, uh, and the, the, um, the thing that I should note is that the eye can already start seeing a lot of repetition, right? Like, like right here, there's a lot of repeating terms. This no defs is definitely repeated. Units equals M, that's um, units equal, and I believe it's meters. So, you know, meters is a very popular unit. So we'll see that repeated uh, hundreds, if not thousands of times uh, in our uh, coordinate reference system definitions. Uh, so now, uh, after we run JSON to code compression, trust me, there will be live demos later. Uh, it uh, transforms to that format that we had shown earlier. Um, now we can see that A, the most popular term is uh, no defs, and then B, is the WGS84 datum. Uh, and um, with C is that, this one's a surprise to me, but um, it's the GRS80 ellipsoid. Um, so interesting, you know, you can learn interesting things about um, the, the data set that you're dealing with by running this sort of uh, analysis as well. Um, it's similar to um, term frequency uh, analysis when it comes to uh, natural language processing. Um, and then we're gonna scroll to the bottom here. Uh, it's a really long line, but this is 
uh, the start of the end is it's um, with a, a little pre-processing step, uh, replacing uh, the EPSG 2000 with just the number and then uh, creating the proj for js definition from those uh, strings that we've we've set variable names to. Um, so you can see D plus L plus NU. So, so you can see D is Praj, is transverse Mercator, and L is WGS84. So you can kind of uh, inspect your code and see if it makes sense as well. This is in a binary format. You're not seeing a bunch of ones and zeros, but you can really inspect it and see what's going on. Uh, in the case of this library, um, we did add some uh, some sort of custom code at the end, just um, uh, concatenated it at the end. And this is really just um, to optimize things a little further. And uh, But you don't have to do this. It's sort of almost a micro optimization. Um, uh, you'll see uh, some other interesting things start appearing in this code too, uh, where you see a lot of, you might see like repetitions, um, but they're, they're not uh, represented by variables. So you'll see this K underscore zero. Uh, so we, we don't see that represented for a couple of reasons. Um, the first is that, uh, well, uh, if you, or for example, this is even a better example. If you have the word, the letter K, it might appear a lot, but if you're just going to represent it with the variable K, you're not, or variable A, you're not really saving any bytes um, or file size by representing such a small value. So you'll, you'll, you'll see uh, that that will factor in as well. It, it computes how much space, how many letters, characters are you going to save um, when you when you do when you uh, convert things to strings to variables. Okay, so I'll jump back here. Okay, so comparison to alternatives. Um, so the uh, JSON, the code uh, is in one column. And then I have a column general alternatives. I know people can always sort of poke holes when, when people talk about generalities. So um, feel free to do so in the chat, uh, ask questions. Um, but this is just sort of saying, what's the next best alternative? Um, so for deployment, uh, JSON a code deployment is super simple. Uh, it is, it's just code. Uh, there's no real decoding process. Once you've compressed it, you just run it. Um, Compression is is decent, and I'll show a, a comparison in file size shortly. Um, there are better alternatives um, to compression, uh, like gzip is amazing. Zip is good too, um, and performs almost as well as gzip, and sometimes just as well in a lot of cases. And and geobuff is just and, and then I, I haven't worked with flat geobuff, but um, flat geobuff from the documentation I've seen is amazing as well. Uh, so there are better alternatives if your main factor is just compression. Um, but in reality, uh, open source projects and a lot of closed source projects as well don't have a lot of resources. So we care about maintenance. Uh, maintenance is almost nilled out when it comes to JSON and code because uh, there's, there's no dependencies to maintain. It doesn't have dependencies. It's just code you can run. Uh, security is high as long as the code is coming from a trusted source. Um, and that's partly because, I mean, sorry, not your data is coming from a trusted source, like the EPS GIO. Um, you, if someone wanted to like, you should, to insert malicious code, um, they might be able to do that. Uh, 
you would you, so you don't want to compress random data from strangers um but it is if it is something that you trust uh in that sanitized um once you run it you there's a full transparency into what's happening and you can then run um veracode uh sonars cube and all the the gov people probably know of these things and uh um uh, commercial companies as well and you so it's because it's code you can run static or dynamic scans on on the output uh of json a code whereas you know it's much harder to run uh, dy uh dynamic scanning or you know dynamic or static scanning on on uh binary data and we've we've seen examples of that. You, you can Google it. I don't have the example with me, but like where people have inserted malicious Bitcoin and in, in wallet stealing uh, code uh, as binary data into GitHub repositories, and then that's executed. And it's just it's hard to for security scanners to scan that. Um, and transparency. Uh, hopefully that makes sense now. Uh, so comparison. Oh, sorry. Did I? Oh. I'm sorry, there's two uh, slides here, but uh, wanted to mention some uh, some more nuance. Uh, it does a really good job of compressing text when you have a GeoJSON with a lot of properties, like you might with OSM data or Proj4.js JS definition strings. If you're really just uh, lines without really much text to go along with it, uh, not a lot of attributes, then uh, it's not going to be the solution for you. Um, it, it doesn't do this sort of uh, numerical compression and um, that that sort of thing that, that others excel at. Uh, the compression time, it's not fast. Uh, but if you don't care about how long it takes to compress something, then it's good for you. Uh, the decompression is ridiculously fat, fast. Uh, because it's just executing code. It doesn't. You don't have to load uh, a, a zip or a gzip library, or you don't have to load uh, a geobuff library into the browser, uh, which can be awesome at times, but it does take some time to load those libraries. You can just run it. Um, okay, so now I'm going to show an example of the VS... Um, some ex example of some compression that I did recently. Uh, uh, let me first show the data we're talking about. Um, can you see my uh, VS code? So uh, there's this uh, parks.geojson. Uh, it comes from OSM. You can see there's a lot of attributes, properties to the data, different tags. You can start seeing highway gets repeated a lot. So this is really text rich data. Um, and when we run compression on it, uh, based on the code compression on it, it does fairly well. Um, you can see originally it was 11 megabytes and then, uh, it was originally 11 megabytes. JSON a code compression converts it to uh, 6.9 megabytes. And then um, if you wanted to use gzip or zip compression, uh, that's 1.3 megabytes. So um, yeah, so you can see it, it does a lot better gzip and zip, um, but you know, just going back to the pros and cons, what'll work for you. Um, okay, so now um, I'm going to try to get more interactive here. Uh, maybe I'll try to get onto Venulus, but um, I'm going to drop. If you if you'd be able to maybe copy this to the um, the chat on Venulus, um, that, that's an, uh, this is a website that's live now, uh, that allows you to compress this data. And so you can see it for yourself. So if we load up this proj4js definitions.json file, um, you can then download it 
um, and uh, and get it compressed. Yeah, so for small files, it's still super fast. Um, but if you're doing like um, trying to compress uh, OSM information on all the parks in the US, it will take about 30 seconds. So uh, I'd love to do some live demos now with some totally random data people throw at me. So uh, if people would like to post links to any JSON data they have, uh, I'd love to sort of demo it and see if if things go horribly wrong. Um, or if you have any questions, happy, happy to answer questions. Thank you very much, Daniel. It was quite clear a presentation. And uh, I think it was uh, visible, your, your code and your examples. Um, we have one first question uh about the different uh, applications and use causes of this tool uh, it, can it be used whenever we use json and geojson yes um you'll want to compare it to your alternatives but anything that's geojson absolutely can be compressed by json and code um and anything that's json can definitely be compressed by json and code so my, my question is, is for example, uh, for services providing uh, GeoJSON, can it be used and can we uh, compress it on the fly? For example, a WF server, a WFES server or OGC API server answering with JSON, can we change this JSON to code and receive the code on the client side? Wow, you just blew my brain. Uh, I did not think of that, um, but that sounds like it would definitely be possible. It's a super simple algorithm. So uh, I know GeoServers in Java, um, but if someone wanted to rewrite it uh, in Java, it, that would be, that should be, um, well, I shouldn't say super simple. It's not super simple, but you would be able to rewrite it in Java. Um, and uh, it, uh, it, but it we can... return, there's a security question. Um, I don't haven't fully thought it through all of that. So if you're in a super high security environment, uh, you might want to wait for some security testing. Um, but uh, for for uh, open data in 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 other sort of trusted internal environments, maybe it it, it would. It, there's no reason you wouldn't be able to. Yeah, but we could even without changing GeoServe, for example, we could have some proxy in between that uh, receives the GeoJSON from the server and compress it and and will deliver the, the compressed version to the client, something like that. It would be a nice use case. So the the transport would be a, a, a more compact file from the server to the client. Yeah, I think it would be a possible use case, but maybe we need to do some tweaks on the sites. Um, are people also asking about a decompression demo? Uh, oh, yeah. To see um, the decompression on that. Uh, yeah, let me share that URL here. So it's, no, sorry. Where what is it? Yeah, it's here. Um, Daniel J do four dot com slash JSON to code. Um, but if anyone wants to to try it and let us know how it goes, or um, and provide a URL uh, to your JSON data, um, we can we can try it live. So I don't know if there are more questions from the audience. No more questions. Daniel, thank you very much for your presentation. I think we will have you here in 
in, in for another presentation, I think, right? Uh, yeah. So thank you for being around. And if people have questions, they can use the, the chat and can use your, your links. So thank you very much and see you later. We'll you. prepare the stage for the next speaker. Thank you. So we'll start on time in about uh, four minutes. We already have Krishna here, the, the next speaker. So in, in three or four minutes, we'll go live again. So I will try to use this banner.